That's right, today we are going to be swapping this wooden brush for a metal brush, and I'm going to show you why this is a really cool way of painting miniatures. I'm going to need that brush later. Now, I appreciate that not everybody may have access to one, or they might be sitting on the fence of whether to get one or not, and not to mention what brand of paint to use. So I'm going to show you today my favourite method of getting some airbrushing done. Let's go! Ah, an airbrush. The cheats method of getting miniatures painted quickly, efficiently and effectively. But you can also have so much fun doing it. We need to prime our miniature first before we even start painting. You could opt to spray it with a rattle can. But today we are using a ghost grey surface primer from Vallejo. This is a really nice coloured primer and it can be applied onto miniatures by brush or for a better coverage and consistency, an airbrush. This will then give our following colours that little bit extra vibrancy. The dragon is going to be painted with speed paints, or you could use Games Workshop's contrast range just as easily. These paints are already super thin and they will go through the airbrush really well. However, I do like to add a small amount of acrylic paint thinner. This one by Tamiya. It will make the paint mix last that little bit longer. But I find it makes it even easier to control the layers as you paint on the miniature. For example, here on these goblins, you can see what the end result will look like with the amount of passes we have done on them. On the dragon, it was gone over once to get the initial colour on and coming back with another to give a more solid appearance, especially on the wings. You can see that a single layer was used to go on the fleshy skin parts of our mythical beast. This will be our basis for a blended look later on. And as airbrush paints dry pretty much instantly, we can move on to the next colour. The red was given some darker tones by using a Slaughter Red speed paint. And this was used sparingly in some areas to create a subtle shade. Just pick out some of the muscles and the scales that would be on the underside of the dragon where natural shadows would form. And for the wings, only the areas where the fingers are were painted just to darken these down a smidge before our main shadow colour will be applied. And that will be a 50-50 mix of Slaughter Red and Hive Dweller Speed Paint. This will then give you that deeper, darker maroon colour. We are going to use the same principle as we did before, and use our new colour to make the shaded areas even darker. But this time physically painting a thinner line as to not completely cover what we did before. And for a bit of extra detail, using the large flattish area that we have been given with these wings, some curved lines were added to go across them, just to give the creature a bit more of a menacing look, like a tiger. For the body of the dragon, again the underneath sections where the shadows would lie were picked out. If we were to say that the sunlight is coming directly from above him and he's not flying upside down and doing barrel rolls in the sky. And I mean, who are we kidding? If I was a dragon, I totally would. The larger scales were also picked out to create a dark base coat for later on. And now to the flesh we go. This is my favourite thing I discovered whilst using speed paints through an airbrush. And I hope that Speed Paint 2.0 will do the same. And that is to force a reactivation. To do this, I'm gonna crank the airbrush compressor right up from 20 to 40 to give us more power. Like the Power Rangers, the gold one is the best one. You can see that the red that we strategically placed onto the skin area at the start is starting to reactivate and the colours are bleeding together. To set them in place and create that quick blended look, the trusty hairdryer was used to speed things along and get that paint dry. The exact same method was done for the rest of the flesh areas on the dragon. If I were to duplicate this and do it by hand, it would have taken far longer to do, 
So, more time saved means more cups of coffee. Whilst that's going on, I would like to say thank you very much to all of my patrons that support this channel. You guys are all awesome. And if you, the viewer, would like to see what it's all about and get exclusive content, then check out the link in the description of this video. For the final base colour, we are going to add some interest to the bottom of the wings and create some shaded curved lines, much like we did for the top. Some hardened leather was faintly applied to create those subtle shadows. Overall, I'm loving the vibrancy that speed paints give through an airbrush. And another nice thing is you don't need to use too much of this paint to get some really nice looking results. And now I'm looking forward to revisiting this old project and finishing it off after many a year being stuck in a cupboard. Now where's that brush? Uh, leaving the spray booth behind, we are going to do the details of this wonderful creature. Some dark tone was used to create even more shade on the body, but importantly to go around the edges of the larger scales to basically frame them off from the red of the smaller scales. This darker colour will make our future highlights stand out a bit more, due to the dark light contrast that we will have going on. Let that shade paint dry and we can start doing the highlighting work. The larger scales are quite defined, so you can highlight them with a fine tip brush or in this case a dry brush. Scar tissue was used first, and this will be our mid-tone highlight. For the sharper looking brighter appearance, scent or skin was applied afterwards. The main scaly part of the body was again also done using a dry brush. This simple technique can go a long way when you have a nice texture to a miniature such as this. And you can get things done that little bit quicker. Because I ain't got no time to highlight each of those little shapes individually. You don't need to put much pressure on with the bristles, just let the brush glide over the miniature and let the texture do all the work for you. We did the same thing with the flesh tones of our dragon, but this time using a lighter colour of Brain Matter Beige. Don't worry about getting any of this paint onto the red scales, as it still forms a nice natural highlight between the pale cream and the red colours. At this point we have our red beast looking pretty cool, and we just need to pick out some of those final details. For the fur we want a bit of contrast here, so after the initial black base coat, some bluish grey tones we use to pick out the texture of the hair. These blues stand out nicely over the red and yellow tones that we have painted so far. And it's also a nice go-to for hair colours rather than just shades of grey. And it's these colours that we used for the claws and the teeth. The same principle of using black for the base coat and then switching to a couple highlights of a necromancer cloak, followed by filthy cape, allowed us to have a different coloured highlight on this different texture. And these colour combinations can work really well on smaller models too, that are traditionally quite dark. As you can see, painting these larger scale miniatures can be pretty fun, and you can do a variety of colour combinations for these creatures. And if you have any questions about airbrushing or would like to know more, then pop them in the comments below and I'll get back to you. And I say, if this video has been helped you well-being, then subscribe for more. And until next time, keep on hobbying.